to Talking Books TV. I'm your host, Michelle Vane DePass, and today I'm so pleased to have Les Fox with us. He has written the Art Hunter's <laughs> Handbook, and he can tell you everything you want to know about finding that great deal at a garage sale. Welcome to the show, Les, and tell me, I'm at a garage sale, I see a painting, how do I know whether to buy it or not? Hi. Well, hi, Michelle. Um, now, there are 240,000 artists in the online art databases, and we have access to that, and we do free appraisals for people and help them uh, determine whether the artist that they came across is valuable. If the artist isn't in the 240,000 database uh, listing, which includes over 5 million auction records, unfortunately, there's a pretty good chance that your painting is not by a famous artist or an artist that's worth more than its decorative value. So you can also Google, but if it's not in the, in the uh, Art, artist databases, the painting is probably by an artist who is talented, but just not valuable. We do our initial research on a website called Ask Art. Have you been on Ask I Art? I have been on Ask okay. Art. And when I mentioned that 240,000 da uh, person database, they're one of several websites that has uh, access to that many artists and that many paintings. And you can look at, on that for free. They charge, um, I think, $9 a day and $25 a month. But you can look on there for free just to see if the artist is listed. You can sometimes see biography. You can sometimes see a few paintings. So if the artist is on there, is that a pretty good bet that, you, you know, that if the paintings for sale for 50 bucks or 100 bucks that you ought to go for it? There are very few artists on Ask Art where, where the, the paintings are not worth in the hundreds. Uh, a significant percentage of the artists have paintings in the thousands. Uh -huh. And then it gets a, a smaller number but it goes into the ten thousands, hundreds of thousands, and millions of dollars. So I would say yes, fifty dollars. You buy a, a decent oil painting by any artist listed on Ask Art. It's almost certainly worth more than fifty dollars. It's probably worth at least five hundred or a thousand dollars. Wow! The scream. Most people that see the, the painting, the scream by Edvard Munch, a Norwegian artist from the late nineteenth century and early twentieth century, think it's an ugly painting, and and it is scary. It's it's the, like you said, it's that face where the person looks like they're in agony and terror, and that's what he intended. And there are four versions of it, and each one is scarier than the next. And the, the, the one that just sold at Sotheby's is the only version that was in private hands. It was in a, a Norwegian businessman's collection, his family's collection, for 70 years. And we knew that because of how famous that painting is, and as you said, in, in, in our book, we, um, we make it quite clear that the ugliest painting, the ugliest genuine oil painting that Picasso ever did is still worth millions of dollars, whether you like it or hate it. And the best painting that your next door neighbor did, you could it could be it could actually be more beautiful, more talented looking than a Picasso. It's just not going to be worth that much money unless your next door neighbor happens to be someone like Picasso. But the scream, Sotheby's estimated the scream is going to bring eighty million dollars. There were actually five mil, five people, maybe six, bidding on that painting at the hundred at, at or close to the hundred million dollar level. And before the sale, we had done quite a bit of research about the paintings, and we we knew that museums, that billionaires, and that lots of wealthy art collectors and people who just want to become famous by owning something like that, we knew that there was going to be serious bidding at above the $80 million level. And we estimated a little high. We estimated it would bring $135 million. It only brought $120 million. <laughs> wow! But that was $40 million more than Sotheby's thought. And we had the closest um, nationally publicized estimate of what that painting would bring. So that was pretty exciting. You've been doing this a long time, and you've actually managed to, to pull up some great deals yourself. I know you've got a, a painting behind you that somebody found in their attic. and It's a painting by Fern Coppage, and yeah. she's on the title page of our book. Um, because people seem to find Fern Coppage all the time. A lady last year found one at a hot dog stand in North Carolina, didn't pay a lot for it, and we helped her sell it at auction for $30,000. So... She had a pretty good year at her hot dog stand, thanks to that. But about five or six years ago, a man in Pennsylvania who sells a feed for horses found, a friend of his said, I'm doing an estate sale and there's some paintings in the attic. Would you like to come and take a look before the estate sale starts? That's and beautiful. he said, oh, sure, not, not a problem. And this, this painting, it, was, it needed cleaning, it needed some little bit of touch-up and repair, but this painting was in the attic, and I'm going to guess he bought it for maybe a few hundred dollars. This is a $100,000 painting. Sue and I wound up buying it for our own collection. We, we love her copies. We have a few paintings by her in our collection. And if I turn it on the back, you'll see all the signs 
of the painting being old, the old canvas, the old nails. There's even handwritten on there, it says, um, with love, New Year's Day, 1949. Um, her husband died shortly before or after that, and so this painting was maybe one of the last paintings that she ever inscribed, and, and, and that's one of the reasons we like having it in our collection. But people find fur cottage paintings all the time, and she, her paintings are, are always worth at least ten or $15,000. Wow. And they're all, they're all interesting looking scenes in Pennsylvania. She was a New Hope, Bucks County impressionist, very talented, kind of like almost like a cross between impressionism and Van Gogh. And uh, that's just that's just, that's not the only Frank Hopkins we found. We you know people found several. Well, one of the things I love about the book too is you show in here the artist's signature, so that if you are unsure what you're looking at or if it's an original not not that you'll be able to authenticate it by any means but at least this gives you another step to look at the signature to see if you're looking at what you think you're looking at well pencil signatures are kind of tricky but on oil paintings which is really our specialty and, and to be honest most paintings that are worth thousands or tens of thousands of dollars are oil paintings there are pencil drawings and there are watercolors that can be valuable most valuable paintings are oil and canvas and the signature was put on with a brush and oil paint. And you can actually, can I just turn around and grab something? I'll show you. You can actually buy, sorry about that. You can actually buy what's called a black light, or an ultraviolet light. We actually, we sell this with our book on eBay. Uh, it's, it's not very expensive. We sell it with the book for like for a few dollars more. And this is an ultraviolet light. If you shine this in a dark room on an oil painting, on the signature, and that's not an original signature. If it's not an original signature, it'll turn up as dark purple, and you'll see that it's completely different than every than the rest of the paint on the canvas. Um, this is like a forensic tool, and, and you can and they're not expensive. It's not, it's called a black light or an ultraviolet light, and that's how you can tell if a signature has been added or paint has been added. And it's a very simple thing that that art collectors should learn right away, so that they wow. they don't buy painting. And then beyond that, of course, you need to know where the painting came from. Is there any gallery labels on it, uh, any original invoices. As the painting becomes more valuable, you're going to want more and more documentation, more and more uh, what's called provenance, or the history of a painting. So by the time you get up to a Picasso, which honestly, we're not suggesting that people are going to find genuine Picasso oil paintings. Sometimes people do find sketches and drawings, but all Picasso oil paintings have history dating back to the day he painted it. Wow. And handled by famous gallery. You're not going to just find a um, hundred million dollar, even a ten million dollar Picasso. So if you think you found a Picasso wall painting, yes, tell me about it right away and I'll, <laughs> I'll check it out. <laughs> now, we have some stories on a book of people that found valuable paintings at Goodwill and it's becoming less and less frequent. But I would say, considering how many stores there are and the average, some Goodwill stores get in as many as 2,500 items a day. And some of the clerks don't pay the careful attention to the items that they should. Sometimes if they get a, 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 some paintings that, that look valuable, and like a, and modern art rarely looks valuable. Modern art looks like it's worth $10, and sometimes it's worth $10 million. And I would say modern art would probably be the area where, where even people in thrift stores, even managers in thrift stores, would overlook the paintings because they would think something goofy looking that was done in 1960 or 1970 might not be a valuable painting, whereas something that looks like it's 100 years old and it's a beautiful landscape, they might think that's more valuable. We hear from hundreds of people a month, and I would say several people a month find something worth anywhere from a few hundred to a few thousand dollars at a thrift store. No, they don't find the Picassos, but they still find something of value. If a living artist is already somewhat famous, and we have a couple of artists in the book, like Richard Prince, uh, who sells for $7 million, is a picture of a, a painting called Man Crazy Nurse in our book. And, no one can believe that that painting, that anyone paid $7 million for it. I mean, Richard Prince can. Right. And people that love Richard Prince can. A lot of celebrities do collect Richard Prince. Um, but most people are a little surprised at that. Except for famous living artists, I would say you'd be better off, if you were going to buy a painting um, to hold on to as an investment, you'd probably be better off buying a painting from the 1930s or 40s by an artist that's slightly famous, and they probably would become more famous. Contrary to popular belief, artists do not become are more famous just because they die. If they're famous during their lifetime, like Thomas Kincaid, who recently passed away, um, his work is now in more demand, and his original paintings, which used to be selling for thirty or $40,000, have recently started to sell for $100,000, probably because he just died. Your website is AmericanArtAdvisor.com. 
That's me. Tell me how, why I should use you. Like, the book tells me, kind of lays it out. I found a painting. I look it up. I see that it might be worth something. Why can't I just call up Sotheby's and try to sell it? Why should I go through you? Okay, um, we are art brokers, and we do sell paintings for people through Sotheby's and Christie's. We actually buy paintings as partners, and the, and the difference between doing business with Sotheby's or doing business with me is if you have a Van Gogh, the people at Sotheby's are going to fall all over themselves to, to help sell it. But if you have a painting that's a five or ten or fifteen thousand dollar painting, that's a pretty valuable painting for most people. Sotheby's is inundated with paintings in that price range, and they find it difficult to even spend a great deal of time with people to help them understand what they have. They're helpful. I'm not going to say anything bad about Sotheby's and Christie's, but uh, Sue and I have a you know a two person operation, and we cater more to the average person's people that go to flea markets and garage sales and find something of more modern value. We can handle a, a valuable painting. And I still think that you should contact us uh, to help to make sure that Sotheby's is giving you a good estimate to see if we might be able to uh, to be involved as in, a, in a partnership. So if you look at our website, there's a lot of questions and answers on there, and videos and lists of artists. And, and I really think that we can provide a valuable service uh, that supplements what all the major auction houses, including Sotheby's and Christie's, do. And we'll, we'll sell it at Sotheby's and Christie's with people as partners. And I think in most cases, the people are very happy working with us to do it that way because it's, it's, we handle it on a very personal level. Les, I got to go. I got to go find a garage sale. You do? <laughs> well, there's 15 million people a week are going to garage sales, so there must be a lot of garage sales. <laughs> Thanks for being on the show today. Sure. Again, the book is Art Hunter's Handbook. You can find it on eBay and Amazon, and you can just go to the website and email Les and Sue all your questions. Thanks for being on the show. Okay, thank you.